break. Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Now, now I know. Just kind of hopping to it, to the back to the mole swarm. I know that, um, and I've seen the mole swarm. I've been talking to clients about it, which seems to be a really kind of a, a a much bigger version and perhaps a clearer version of what used to be just the DNR. Can you talk a little bit about the mole swarm and about what yeah. your training is in the mole swarm and how to deal with it? Sure. It's, it's this a, is a mole swarm. <laughs> you you it's have not the, it's not the pink. It's one. a real it's a real form. It's a real form. It's yeah. not the pink one. It's a one. sample. Yep. Yeah, the sample so, form. Yeah. Um, and we have to accept, and one other issue is that, yeah. remember, if you have a patient that's conscious and alert and has this, they have the right to change that at any point in time. Uh, family members, mm -hmm. it, it's a tough issue. Uh, we have EMTs and paramedics that want to do the right thing. Yeah. They're trained to save people as opposed to right. letting them lay there. So it's, it's, it's a difficult issue for the EMTs and the paramedics at the same time. So, so, so when you're training folks, right, so what do you do about that issue? And I think I've heard you talk yeah. to me about that issue. So you have a person who has a DNR or now a mole form, and among other things, they've checked off the box. It says, do not resuscitate. And now, you're, and now there's that person on the ground. Now, I realize if that person had a, a healthcare proxy and the proxy were there and the proxy says, resuscitate them, then you got to resuscitate them. Yep. But in theory... If there's a child there who can't show they're the proxy, they've got no right to tell you what to do to this person if they've got a, a, a most form, right? Correct. But as a practical matter, what happens? We usually honor them, and one of the big uh, thing issues with the most form is we're encouraged to call medical control. Mm -hmm. I see. Which is out of Marlboro Hospital, through the emergency room. Uh, we get medical control, so we say, this is the situation, we've got a most form, it's signed properly, what do you want us to, you know, because we, we look oh, at the direction see. also. I see, because you obviously, ultimately, you're taking directions from the doctors. Yeah. Correct. So you'd prefer to have a doctor that says, this is what we want you to do. Here's the, here's the, here's the sticky situation that we're in. Um, here's what we have in front of us, giving them, you know, any reasons why we're calling them, and, and then they get to help us make that decision. Right, yeah. right. Although, obviously, once again, time is, time is of the essence in this correct. kind of situation. Correct. So that's in the, in the resuscitate. Mode. Now, I noticed from going through the, the form, there's also a section about intubation mm -hmm. and through which the, the per, older person can, say, well, can choose, well, do I want to be intubated or not? So right. what in the world is intubation? What is that? So Don's not in a numerous yeah. time. <laughs> right. Intubation. See, I, I listened to this. Yeah. I couldn't do any of this. I would faint watching somebody yeah. even doing this. Um, so it, it's an advanced level um, skill where... Um, say you're not breathing, uh, and, and we've used the BOS level, which is a, you, you know, you can use a, a bag valve mask, which is, you'll see those masks that we put on your face, and yep. it has a strange bag. Um, so that is a way to, um, you know, give the patient oxygen, help them breathe. So it's you know, pushing mechanical. oxygen into them. Correct. I see. And you're connected to an oxygen canister and everything, so you're getting good, rich oxygen. So in addition to that, which, it, it, that works very well. Um, we, we also can do an intubation, which basically means, you know, sort of like when you go in for surgery. You go in for surgery and they put the tube down your throat so that they can breathe for you during the procedure. It's the same thing with us. It's a, it's a procedure where we, you know, we're, we're able to put a tube down, to your, down your throat to your, to your lungs yeah. and be able to breathe in, a, in, a, in a, a much better fashion instead of having just a mask that you have to hold down. I see. And is there some kind of a mechanical device that pushes the oxygen in or are people actually breathing into it? Uh, so, yeah. So we, we attach it to, again, that bag, uh, which is attached to oxygen. We also have, um, you know, devices that... Um, some of the other trucks that will have um, the entire um, respirator, uh, respirator, respirator system for it so that it can do it while you're doing other things and you're not holding the bag. I see. And, and have you, has it been your experience that you've seen most forms that will, that will actually say, yes, do, do CPR, but don't do intubation? I mean, you can. I, I don't know if I've personally seen that. It's a, usually, in, in my experience, a DNR is a DNR, and, and they don't want any life-saving uh, treatment. Yeah. Right. Uh, but they right. have that option. You know, they can say, you know, um, I, I want to. I don't want to be resuscitated, but if I'm having a hard time breathing, you can go ahead and do uh, mechanical ventilation for me or help me breathe better. I see. So has the has the most form? First of all, about how long has the most form been around? 
Do you have a sense? 2010. Yeah. 2010. And has it helped? Does it help you in you know when you're on the scene? Does it has it made your job easier or harder? No, I think it, I think it's a great uh, a great piece of information to have. It's clear cut. Um, there's no questions asked, and unless the patient can verbalize that they want it to change that moment, that's right. what you it's what you honor, and it's and it's what wishes. you honor. It's what you right. want. Yeah. And in many in many ways, I, I know from my, my own perspective, <clears throat> talking to clients, I, I find you know, talk to them, it's often a lot easier for them to make that decision than to leave it to their kids. Because yeah. their kids are always oh, going to say, absolutely. save them. Yeah. <clears throat> save them. Cause and, I, and both <clears throat> my parents have passed recently, and both of them had DNR orders. Mm -hmm. And it's just understanding that, and a lot of times it's in a hospice situation, right. where it, right. it becomes very important to the... Mm -hmm. uh, the, for the person and the family to understand that nothing else is going to take place. Right. Right. Yeah, these most forms are, life. are for people with life-threatening diseases, illnesses, injuries, you know, and, and so they look at their value of quality and value of life and do I want to have you keep trying that, you know. So. Right, right. There's a point at which you really want to say, maybe God's telling me something here. It really <laughs> is. It's time for me yeah. to go. Yeah. Now, in, in the last few minutes, I just want to switch to a different topic, right? but also one of deep interest to my elder clients. Who pays? Who pays? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about when an ambulance shows up at your door for whatever reason, and maybe it, maybe yeah. it varies depending yeah. on the reason, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, the, and the person that you're picking up is over 65 years old, yeah. right? So when does Medicare pay for that? When does Mass Health pay for that? When do you pay for that? What happens is uh, anybody over age 65 that yeah. is on Medicare... Uh, a lot of times you have a supplement, which will be the Medicaid or MedX. Or MedX. If they were a, a municipal employee, a lot of times they have MedX, which is a, a good plan. They'll pay. Uh, what happens is Medicare will pay 80% of any approved ambulance bill. And what is an approved ambulance bill? Uh, if I, if it's I'm it's on usually the a 911 emergency. 911 okay. emergency. Uh, we, we don't need a patient signature, but we always try and tell our employees, get the patient signature anyways. Uh, the patient's ticket on the on, on the, our form, yeah. If they're conscious and alert, if not, yeah. we can put in there. And is that uh, the form that you'd be submitting that yeah. you'd be submitting to Medicare? Yeah. And are you a, a, a Medicare provider who Correct. can build Medicare we directly? Build so Medicare you don't have to directly. build the patient, and the patient yeah. has to build Medicare. Yeah. Unless we don't have any information whatsoever, and a lot of time that'll happen when you get somebody unconscious, right. no family members, we have no information. A lot of times we'll go back up to the emergency room because we have a relationship with the hospital. Yep. They can give us that billing information so we don't have to bother the patient. I see. Now, after that, there's a 20% balance. Either Medicaid will pay for that or MedEx if they have a supplement. If it's Medicaid or welfare and they're on 65, it's And, it's, it's and, and Mass Health is the Massachusetts name for it. When you say Medicaid, Mass Health is the same as Medicaid Correct. for those purposes. It's all covered. I get it. So, it, so, it, so if, if the person either has a supplemental insurance policy, like yeah. MedEx, right, yeah. or they're on Mass Health, then 100% of the bill gets paid. Bill covered. Yeah. Now, what about if they're on Medicare C? What about if they have, if they have a Medicare Advantage plan? That's still Do, covered. Yes? Yes. And in, in, the, Medi in, the, case of, in the case of the Medicare Advantage plans, and once again, I, I have no idea yeah. how this part works, right? This is... Um, is, is it 100% covered, or in that case, is it also 80% covered, and then the, then the individual picks up the... It's 80%, and then the individual's responsible after that. A lot of times, these coverage plans will, will cover 100%. Yes? Yeah. And I, can and I know... We and know, because we build right. probably 155 different insurance companies. And I know the Medicare Advantage plans vary, right? So, right. so from plan to plan, that's maybe yep. one of the things you want to be sens sensitive to. Whether it's Harvard or Blue Cross right. or, or Thompson. Right. Or, or, and and is, the, is the ambulance bill... The amount always the same. Like if you're in Marlboro and you're finding somebody in Marlboro yep. and you're bringing them to Marlboro Hospital, yep. is that always that's the same bill across every place in Marlboro? They will they will see a a, a private bill, but we yep. reduce it because we have a contract with Medicare. Then the patient will see on the bill a reduction to the Medicare rate. I see. The Medicare will only pay eighty percent of that. We're not allowed to bill above and beyond Medicare. Right, you can't balance bill. Correct. Right. So so if you. If you're picking up that person, and it's yeah. so it, first of all, it has to be a, a so-called 911 emergency. It doesn't have to be, but scheduled transports are reimbursed by Medicare too. But for our instance, for our for our purposes here, most 99% yeah. of our 911 calls. Okay, but but you're telling me that non I guess because this is more of a question, more kind yeah. of general interest to elders. Yeah. But even non 911 calls, so-called scheduled as long, transfers, as long as it's approved by the physician, and they're going to a, a hospital or nursing home. Yes. 
so it's approved as if it's approved by the physician. Correct. So the physician must have to certify to that, sign a that they can't get form. there. Correct. I get it. So they have to sign a, a medical necessity form. Yes. So, so what about in those cases where you're going from the nursing home to the hospital? I remember hearing various stories about that, as, that trip. If it's the emergency room, it's not a problem. But there are also cases where they go to a doctor from a nursing home to a doctor's office. That's not a covered service. I see. So the patient's personally responsible for that bill. Uh, I see. So it's when they're going to the hospital. How about if they're going to the hospital to see a doctor as opposed to going to the hospital because they're going I don't to the ER? It. It's not a covered service. Under Medicare. Yeah. Oh, this is fascinating stuff. Yeah. Because these are the, these are the things that you kind of you, yeah. that you hear about all the time. You must dread that too, having to <laughs> having to try to figure out. Uh, it's just it's having difficult. To, having to, now we what have, a, we have great billing people. So now if you have if you have someone who's get who's picked up by the ambulance because there is an emergency. Yeah. And they say, oh, not Marlboro Hospital. I want to go to Framingham. I want to go to Worcester, right? If it's a stable patient, we can we can do that request. We've taken a. General numerous times to uh, Mass General. To Mass General. Yeah. Boston, Framingham, I, uh, the, Worcester. The I and I and here, the nose, mm -hmm. yeah. the nose doctors in there, because he, he has to go there because he has these terrible nosebleeds. And I gather that's not the same bill. You're not sending the same bill when you're going into Boston as you are when you're going Medicare, into Medicare. Yes, but they, they, yeah, we submit it to Medicare if he's on Medicare. But the amount must change. It does. Yes. So the amount changes just based but on it, mileage. It's based, based on mileage. Yeah. And any ancillaries, but uh, yeah. Medicare Medicare rates are based on a flat rate now. It used to be oxygen, hot monitor, IVs, all that. Right now, it's a it's all flat, flat rate. rate. See, they're making life easy for you. No, they're not. <laughs> how, ter <laughs> how terrific! How terrific! Yeah. Well, I really, really appreciate all the information, and I know the folks who are watching this yeah. really appreciate the information. I know that we were also talking about the fact that you actually have a set of slides that are the slides that you use in your training program to train your EMTs. Yeah. And one of the things that we're gonna to try to do is actually invite Dave and maybe Dave and Don to go to one of my Council on Aging seminars and make that a piece of the seminar so that you can kind of understand, once again, through the eyes of the ambulance and the EMTs, how they're looking at your situation when you get there. So thank you very, very much for taking the time. Thank you all for watching. And uh, we'll see you again in the next uh, version of Bergeron Breeze. Thank you. Terrific. Good. Terrific, Good. terrific, terrific. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think it's just really useful information. And it's stuff that people.